Hello everyone, and welcome to the Bolt Add-on Community Pack version 2 release. I wanted to go ahead and do a video for this one because it's a little bit different from the ones that have come before it, as you might be able to tell from the 2.0 moniker on the version, but we've got some pretty cool stuff and a few things you're going to have to do to potentially bring this into your project. So if you're not familiar with the Bolt Add-on Community Project, it's an open source uh, project available on GitHub. Anybody can submit ideas, um, submit pull requests, and extend the Bolt in an open source way. It's an MIT license, so you're free to use them however you wish. But the 2.0 release, if you want to go ahead and get that, you can go over to the go out to releases and you'll see the version 2 release. Version 2 is a lot bigger than some of the other releases in terms of the content, which is why I'm making this video. And you can see there's a lot of available Unity packages to download. So I'm going to go over those here. Uh, that's actually kind of the fundamental reason I'm doing this video. And let's go over what the new content is. So version 2 has some new units. Uh, here you can see there are six new units. Uh, we're going to show off these in a few moments inside of a project. Uh, these are more complex units than have appeared before. And actually right here we have the very first feature pack from Jason. He's started to contribute to the community project as well. So uh, you'll actually see that here, and we actually have put together an example project to kind of show how those work, and we'll be we'll be uh, displaying that here in a few minutes. Lastly, we've gone through some architectural changes, and that's why there is an update pack or upgrade pack that you will see up here as a potential download, or you can just download everything, and that includes the upgrade with it. Uh, and of course, you can download the individual items as well. And lastly, poor old is null is has been deprecated. It will continue to work in any of the projects that you have, but it is uh, no longer going to be found in the fuzzy finder, and it is fully replicable by the built-in equal unit and in null. You can't use the object equals, uh, which if you're searching, may be what you find in the fuzzy finder, but if you use the one that's under logic, then this will this will work properly. It will detect whether it is null and give you a Boolean back. Okay, so if you're just getting started with Community Pack, feel free to either download the, the individual items or the full pack. Um, if you're upgrading, then you're going to be able to download those. But if you're uh, getting the fundamentals pack, you're going to have to either download the full with upgrade or the upgrade pack uh, by itself. And what these are, are these are just dummies. They basically dummy out the old DLLs because we've, we've changed the way that the architecture uh, is is in the project because it wasn't going to scale for the additional content that Jason was going to be bringing over. It just, we had too many DLLs and instead we've compressed those all down into the fundamentals DLL as opposed to the individual DLLs. The problem with Unity is when you import a Unity package, it doesn't let you clean up and delete old content. So instead what we have to do is we have to give you dummy DLLs that do nothing but just sit there and eliminate the old DLLs that were there, but they're not going to be providing any content on their own. You can actually go ahead and delete these three DLLs. Actually, I think it's four because I think the variable says an editor one. Uh, you can delete those from your project or you can just install the upgrade pack, not worry about it, and it, these just won't provide anything. It'll all be from the fundamentals pack. So I actually have a, a empty project here that doesn't have anything but Bolt already installed in it. Uh, so far, we haven't been told how Bolt 1.4 is going to be changing things, which is to be reasonable. It's still an alpha. Uh, he hasn't given us the details on what we're going to have to do to make the, all of this compatible with that. Once 1.4 is released or we have those details, we'll go through the upgrade and release that as well. So I have with me here a set of the files here. And um, these are the, the packages. I've already downloaded them, if you will. And of course, I actually have them where I uploaded them. So I'm going to import the full width upgrade just because um, for simplicity pack or for simplicity here, you're going to see that it imports these old DLLs, but they're empty, as well as the two new pa packages that we offer. The fundamentals pack, which is all three of the old ones put together. They're simple standalone units. They, they don't offer big features. They're just convenience. And then the events, which is Jason's um, upgraded uh, return events package that you might have seen on the forum. Except now we have this as custom units that offer uh, variadic a uh, number of arguments, so it's, it, it is an upgrade from what is on the forums. 
So let's go ahead and uh, bring this in. I'm going to get rid of my extra in, uh, inspector window here because I've brought in my floating panel over here. And in addition to this, we actually have an example that you can download uh, from the website uh, here, this examples. And it's a, just a little simple example for return events, but it's pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and import this as well. It's not included in the full with upgrade pack. Uh, you do actually have to specifically download this because you may not wanna pollute your project here. Opening this is gonna give us a little demo scene here. Forgive the graphics, this was put together very quickly, but we have a little rocket ship here that's uh, just sitting on a flat plane. And um, inside our hierarchy here, we have a rocket. And this rocket has our new trigger return events, um, which are basically like a function or method call in something like C-sharp, wherein we invoke them on some object, it does something, and at some point it returns a value. And in this case, it's going to be returning a value whether the countdown succeeded or was aborted. And so we're providing some argument, and then after some time, it's going to return. And uh, we're going to use this in a couple different places in the graph to uh, start different countdowns of different length. And uh, we're going to be able to abort some of them. Um, it's just a simple example. It's nothing really complex. Our rocket also here has a UI, uh, which is going to have things that uh, will update based on the state of the rocket. And uh, there's a couple of graphs in here, which if you download it, you'll be able to, to ex explore around and see how we do some of the things that we're doing inside the project as well as our engines, which um, we will be starting and stopping based on logic in the rocket. And finally, the countdown, which is where our return events actually are located. This is just going to set up a, uh, our state. And then here we actually have our logic for uh, when the, the countdown completes. And uh, depending on whether we, we uh, start successfully or abort, then we will actually invoke the return. And that will go back and release the return flow from the trigger return event. So let's go ahead and see this in action. It's it's just a really simple demo um, of, of this rocket, but it's it's dinky fun here that we can just show off a little bit of how this works. So here's our rocket. Remember, we have our, an abort sequence wired up and uh, we have our main start countdown. So I'm gonna launch, which will start the countdown with a value of 10 seconds. And you'll see that down here. There's a, a countdown that, that begins. And you notice that this flow has not actually invoked yet. If I go ahead and abort, we get a false back from our trigger return event. So this actually didn't return immediately. It actually returns at some point later in time with the result of the operation, which is pretty cool. But let's go ahead and let that succeed. And this way, this branch will fire off and we'll start up our engines or we'll signal the engines to start. And so with that, we get a little particle animation and particle effect and the rocket begins its ascent. And you saw that actually fired over here. And uh, if we go over to our scene, in fact, the rocket is actually taking off here. Whee! So let's go ahead and turn the rockets off. Uh, we could do that, which you normally you would not do uh, with a rocket, but let's go ahead and turn the rockets off. It gives us a two second cooldown, and then uh, we actually triggered that event. So let's go ahead and do that again real quick in case uh, you missed it. We'll let the timer cool down or fire down. Rocket will launch. And here in a few seconds, we'll turn the, the rockets off. Look down here for a countdown, you'll see that. Um, there it is, and bam. And we abort the, the launch, the rockets cool down, and of course there's no explosion because this is a simple demo I put together in a few minutes. But these are not the only new units that comes with version two. Uh, we also have uh, logic. Excuse me, actually, I don't have those regenerated yet. Uh, when you bring in a new version of the uh, community pack, you are going to have to go into here to bolt and hit build unit options. You don't have to mess with the unit options wizard at all. You don't have to add the DLLs to, to this list. Uh, you can see here, I don't have them. All I need to do is go in here, bolt, and build the unit options, which is going to take all of those custom units that are offered and bring them in automatically. So I'll cut back once that's done. Okay. Now that process is done, so I can go over here and you notice that now most of the, the nodes or the units are under the community uh, list here. There, there are some exceptions to that bolt kind of is, is hard coded with the events and variables. So you will still find the increment, decrement, and plus, ob plus equal in the variables list. And you will also find in the events, you will find the return events as well as the on every X seconds. So uh, the new units are gonna be logic, they're gonna be branch, 
Brams, and they're gonna be Math Op. These names are not set in stone. Uh, we can rename them at will in future versions without messing with your graphs. It, give us some feedback on what you think the names should be and how they should appear in your in your graphs, but for right now, that's what they're called. And these units are variadic. You can set however many parameters you want, and you can also set what operation it should perform. So we've tried to compress down the different options so that there's fewer nodes for you to search for. Instead of searching for an AND or an OR, you can just do a logic and then set the operation to be whatever you want. And you can wire that up and it will do the operation that is indicated here. Likewise, here with the branch, we also have AND and OR, and we can do any number of items that you'd like. Uh, currently, the maximum is 10, uh, which is a little bit hard to get it to do because it thinks you're trying to type in like 41 or something like that. We can up this limit. This is a limit that we currently share with Bolt. If you were to go to like a, a trigger or um, a sum, uh, they currently have a limit of 10 arguments. Uh, we could up that if you'd like. It's not an issue. We just do that to be the same with Bolt right now. But so for instance, uh, in the past, if you had several objects or several values that you wanted to add together, so you had three values and then you wanted to order those together, I guess we can't search for or, so we or those together, and then you want to branch on the result. You would have to do all of this and essentially wire this to this, and this to this, and this to this, and then wire the output to that. This has effectively been replaced by something as simple as we want to add three items together, and we want to or the result with a different value, so let's do this. This is, this is the equivalent of this. Uh, so it's pretty powerful and um, I, I like it. I think it's gonna be uh, pretty useful for, for bringing together a lot, of, a lot of logic and working with uh, notes. Now there's no way to do an and and an or, say so try to compress these two together where you do the and and then or with the, the final component. You can't do that yet. I have some plans for potentially introducing that but it would be very complex notes and it may not be an idea that works out in practice. So we'll see. Lastly, we also have the math operation, which is just a convenience node uh, that allows us to bring together, say, multiply six values together. You can do that now. Uh, if you're doing subtract or divide, of course, order of operations does matter. So if you're doing a subtract, it will take the first argument, subtract the, the second argument from it, take that result, subtract the third item from it, take that result, subtract the fourth item from it, etc. Now, likewise with divide, it'll take the first number and then uh, divide against the second number and then divide against the third and so on. If you're doing add or multiply, then of course the order doesn't matter as much. Um, and of course, add here is really the same as the sum node, which is something that I don't think is, is used as much as it should be. There is actually a sum which will essentially do the add operation, but we do that for convenience. If you suddenly decide, oh, I shouldn't be multiplying, I should be adding, you can just easily switch all the nodes that are connected will we'll stay hooked together. So we can do you know some values here, we'll multiply uh, just some quick values here. Um, just to demonstrate this, we can easily switch what type of operation and it will leave all of the nodes hooked together. So there you go, those are the new units. Um, all the units for the, the return events are the trigger re return event, the uh, return event, and then the return. And um, we'll try to get some more documentation on the wiki here shortly on how to use each one of those uh, of those units to get the, the effect that you're looking for. Okay, that's pretty much everything that's in the pack. I hope this has been informative. Uh, please leave any comments on the either in Discord to me or Jason or on the forum post. Uh, we haven't really started using the wiki for issues, but if you want to start posting them there, uh, that's fine. I'll see them. But uh, usually if you're looking for any, any uh, more immediate feedback, you're going to have better luck on Discord. Thank you so much, and I'll see you next time.